Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into Boca Chica concerning both Starship and the location itself. We'll debrief SpaceX's last mission, JCSAT-18, discuss updates to Crew Dragon's in-flight abort test, then finish with today's honorable mention. So for a while now, SpaceX has been expanding their Starship shipyard and buying up adjacent lots and developing the land. A lot of work is being done in the empty space between the Stargate building and the shipyard, but they also acquired a huge swath of land to the northeast that borders the private property of a local residence. Much of this territory is already staked out in preparation for its future development plans, and a ton of chain link fencing has also been going up along these new perimeters. SpaceX is giving the holdouts currently living in Boca Chica until the end of March to vacate. A handful of homes are still being occupied by locals who have received buyout offers from SpaceX in the recent past, but ultimately turned them down because the offers weren't high enough to relocate them to similar living conditions elsewhere. This March exodus, if you will, is leaving some villagers speculating that things are really going to start getting crazy for SpaceX come around April or May. Many houses purchased by SpaceX over the years were used as storage, but SpaceX is currently renovating them for occupancy purposes and is using part of Stargate as a new storage facility. It's speculated that SpaceX employees, including even Elon Musk himself from time to time, will stay in these renovated homes when visiting. Those who have not moved out come this March deadline will most likely be given badges by SpaceX so that they can repeatedly relocate them to a hotel 40 minutes away in Brownsville whenever SpaceX deems it necessary for safety purposes. This has been discussed in the past between SpaceX and the locals, and we've also covered it right here on my channel. So it wouldn't be a surprise if things turned out this way. The county is known to side with SpaceX at the expense of the locals and also always keeping them in the dark. I mean, SpaceX's presence is a huge benefit to the local economy, and that's something SpaceX can easily hold over the heads of the local officials. But as far as Starship is concerned, several rings for Mark III have been constructed, but again, work seems to be focused on site development. One of those rings was spotted with cutouts that some have speculated to be windows. Others are assuming they are test cuts for machine calibration. A couple safety mishaps did occur a couple days ago. The first was when workers were attempting to erect what appears to be an onion dome support beam, but the crane's line snapped, causing the beam to damage a nearby vehicle. Then just a couple hours later, another tether snapped, causing a load to drop several feet. As far as we're aware, no injuries have been reported. Poor Boca Chica is just plagued with mishaps lately. But this is what happens when you're on the front line of rocket innovation. Things can get intense. And that's why SpaceX has such a diehard fan community. But as far as the East Coast is concerned, the Mark II Starship prototype still hasn't been touched. The word going around is that SpaceX is more concerned with Boca Chica at the moment, as well as Starship's launch pad at 39A and its future facility on Roberts Road. And speaking of facilities, McGregor, Texas has two new finished test stands at their site, a stage two test stand for, of course, second stage engine firings, and a vertical tripod Raptor test stand as well. And if you're like me, and you've ever wondered what it's like to live next door to a rocket engine test site, speculate no more. Thanks to Cape Big Hair on Reddit, we can now experience the rumblings of a Raptor engine ourselves. SpaceX's corporate headquarters in Hawthorne, California is getting into the holiday spirit. They just put up their Christmas tree the other day, and it is beautiful. It does make me wonder if they dug it out of the ground themselves. They're on serial number 17 now, apparently. I think the last time I checked, they were on 10, so yay for progress. Elon did say last month that he wanted to pump out a Raptor a day by 2020. In other news, JCSAT-18 and Pacific-1 launched earlier this week, and U.S. Northern Command was visiting Mission Control during this launch. They're considering a future partnership with SpaceX. This mission marked the 49th successful Falcon 9 launch in a row. That's 52 missions in a row if you include Falcon Heavy. The rocket placed two satellites into orbit, and the booster nailed a bullseye landing on the autonomous drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. And for the very first time, both Go Miss Tree and Miss Chief were staged in the Atlantic to attempt a catch at both fairing halves, but each one barely missed their target and the fairings were fished out of the ocean after splashdown. At least one of the halves looked a little toasty coming into port, and delicious if I might add. Mmm, marshmallows. But it seems both ships were slightly damaged while at sea. One of the arms that holds the net in place looked like it was missing a support structure, and the smaller net used to fish the fairing out of the water was shredded. SpaceX's next launch is supposed to be Starlink 2, but whether or not these two ships will be ready for a second attempt at that time, or if SpaceX might push Starlink 2, is yet to be known. What we do know for sure is that Crew Dragon's in-flight abort test has been pushed from January 4th to January 11th. NASA released a blurb confirming the new launch date, and commercial crew sent out a tweet as well. 
Some people in the community, including myself, are looking at this in a positive light. The fact that they delayed the test when we're only a couple weeks out and they only delayed it by one week gives credence to the idea that this sucker is definitely going to fly next month. And again, Demo 2, the first crewed flight, is planned for February. How many of you guys are planning on going to the Cape for that launch? Personally, I would love to go myself. Okay, before we get into the honorable mention, I would like to quickly mention today's sponsor for this video, Skillshare. So do you enjoy learning in a convenient way? Well, of course you do. That's why you watch my videos. Not like you watch because of my personality or anything. Well, check this out. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative entrepreneurial skills. Whether you're looking to expand your knowledge on animation, advanced aerial videography, or photography, Skillshare's got you covered. When I went down to Boca Chica for Elon Musk's Starship presentation, I took my DSLR camera with me. And at the time, I only had a few months of light hands-on experience with it. And so when I was there, I had to call the everyday astronaut over to help me with my camera because it was nighttime and you know Kevin got confused by all the buttons. But alas, my confusion is no more. I took one of Skillshare's introductory classes on DSLR photography, and now I just need to work on steadying my hands because man, my hands are really shaky. But guess what? Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. See, convenient. The best part is Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when compared to in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the description below and get a two month free trial. Why not check it out? And now it's time for today's honorable mention. This morning, Boeing Starliner lifted off from Cape Canaveral to rendezvous with the International Space Station. This uncrewed capsule is the competition to SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. Launched upon a ULA Atlas V N-22 rocket, Starliner then experienced the seven minutes of thrust of the dual-engine Centaur upper stage that separated from the first stage four and a half minutes after liftoff. Eight minutes after that, the spacecraft separated from the second stage and four orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusts were scheduled. But ultimately, Starliner was placed in an off-nominal orbit. But I will add the orbit was considered stable and the spacecraft maintained electrical power and at the time of filming this mission control is still trying to work the problem we have had a off nominal insertion and mission control teams here at starliner mission control are uh, assessing all of their options so what do you guys think of all this i can't wait to read your comments well, that's all I have for you guys today. A very special thank you to my eccentric members and patrons for the continuous support. If you want more access to SpaceX and space content, there's a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Have a Merry Christmas and Godspeed.